Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today something very strange happened. Apple announced they're buying Beats for three billion dollars. That's nine zeros. So apparently Apple was supposed to buy Beats for 3.2 billion dollars, but Dr. Dre tweeted about it before the deal was announced and the deal ended up closing 200 million dollars less. With the three billion dollar mark, Dr. Dre is gonna get about 750 million dollars, which is, I don't even know how much that is. I can't count. So because of this new news item, I thought I'd pull out my old uh, Beats Studio and do a review on them. They're quite old and uh, this pair is discontinued already, but I looked at the new pair and I find that I don't quite like the, the new style, which is a bit more rounded. I like this uh, kind of boxy look and um, it, is, it is this style that got uh, the company more famous, I think. Um, it's kind of iconic and no other headphones look like this on the market at the time. Overall, I really like the design of this, uh, especially the glossy finish. So what I mainly use these for is that I bring it when I travel and I use them on the plane. And this, the studio pair has the noise cancellation function right here. You can turn on and off the, the noise cancellation. You can probably go to an electronics store and listen to this yourself or borrow someone. They're so widespread nowadays. But uh, the way I would describe the audio quality is that uh, they're quite bassy and, and more bassy than other headphones. Um, which may or may not be what you like. It's mainly a matter of preference because some people like to listen to, let's say, classical and you wouldn't be listening to classical on the beats. You'd really li listen to a lot of uh, hip hop or rap, you know, things with, you know, thumping beats and you want to uh, add more bass to it anyway. And, uh, and so these would work very well for that. So the Beat Studio comes with noise cancellation and you need to turn it on in order to listen to music. If you run out of batteries and you can't, uh, then it won't work. So now let me listen, in, listen to it on my fake iPad. Enough talking about the headphones, I'll show you really quickly what came in the box. Okay, so here's the box. Really quickly, I'm just gonna look through everything. There, it comes with this case. There's the headphones inside. Comes with this uh, uh, iPhone cable. It has the, a little button. It folds open like that. Has the on off button. It's yellow right now because the batteries are low. Here on this side you have the batteries. So over here you have another cable which has no uh, microphone. You have the airplane connector so you can use it on the airplane. And then you have a large headphone jack. You have some manual stuff in here, who cares. Off, and then some uh, cleaning cloth for it. I don't carry any of those around. What I find very useful is the, the airplane connector, which, uh, which is what I mainly use. I actually carry the unit with this hook here for a while. It does not last very long. Kind of next to useless if you try to carry it with this little hook thing. The stitching is not too strong and it'll fall off. So kind of need to carry it this way if you don't want to break this. Also the case here comes with this little flat thing where you can put all your cables and things and whatnot and batteries. So I'm gonna briefly go over how the noise cancellation works. This is just really basic. I didn't look into the headphones, but the basic theory is that whatever noise goes into your ear, the headphone broadcasts something 180 degrees out of phase and it cancels it out. Of course, it doesn't do it perfectly, so that's why you can still hear a little bit of noise and other kinds of noise would like go through your nose or your mouth or whichever and into your eardrum still. So it's not perfect cancellation, but it'll, it'll, it works pretty good. Let's say you have some, some noise source coming in like this and it goes through. The headphones pick, picks it up with a microphone. It goes in here. And then it broadcasts something 180 degrees out of phase. So it'll do something like this. So you can see if you add the two, two up right here, 
it'll just be one straight line. It probably won't be completely perfect, so there will still be a little bit a ripple like this. So that's that's your air pressure, and you'll hear a little bit of uh, non-perfect cancellation. So if you have the older version of the Beat Studio, you might want to give this a try and see if you can listen to the noise. Uh, I've drawn here an overhead look of uh, a head and the eyes are right here. If you're wearing the headphones and uh, if you have some noise source like, uh, like a fan, something noisy and, and nothing else, don't play anything on your, on your iPod and uh, don't have any other kind of noise, just the noise source and stand with your back towards it have the Beats Studio turned on and you can listen for the noise and you can actually hear a bit of hissing um, more like a low-level uh, noise coming out of the headphones and it's pretty apparent but not loud um, if you don't get it try try rotating yourself around and having one noise source um, somewhere around you and and you can probably tell from there even with the suboptimal audio quality, I still like these headphones a lot because of the of the look of it. It looks well designed, and I do actually like the bassy, punchy sound of it, depending on what I'm listening to. But most of the time, I don't mind too much, and and the look of it is just is just really cool. So that's all I have for today. If you like this video, please click thumbs up and like this video for me. And don't forget that uh, I put all my videos in subgroups in my playlist. So look for them in my playlist. Thanks for watching. And um, what? And what? I don't know and what.